welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing a favourites of 2018. So the supplies I use most and enjoyed using most throughout the last year. This will double up as a gift guide as the holidays are coming up very soon. It's already upon us and 2018 is nearly over. It's very scary. So I did a, another video last year for favourites of 2017. That's quite a popular video. I will leave the link up in the iCards if you want to go check that out. I'm going to try as best as I can not to step on the toes of that video and try and keep things different. So newer things. There may be a little bit of overlap. I'm going to try and look at new things I've been using. So we'll start off with a few miscellaneous items before getting into the heavy watercolour paint stuff. So to start with, I'm going to talk about palettes. So first off, we have here the Elagium palette. So this is my studio palette for most of the year. I did do a video on this, sort of going over this palette a bit more in depth and also swatching out all of the colours. So if you want to see that, I will leave that in the iCards as well. Here it is in closer detail, the Elagium palette. I will leave a link down below where you can get that. Sadly, this one is not available at Jackson's. It is a 15 well palette with 12 wells for water colour and 3 large ones for mixing. Next up is the Stackle palette from Jackson's. This is a ceramic Stackle palette. So the Jackson's Stackle palette was one of my better finds. It's rather cheap, it's under £15 and it's very good for saving space. There are six ceramic dishes and they all stack on top of one of each other quite nicely. They fit quite well. They're not stiff fitting, but they're not loose. You cannot mow over if you're heavy handed. But I really like them. They're quite small and they're good to mix them. Another miscellaneous item, not just talking about palettes is a tube wrangler. I found this very helpful recently as some of my tubes of watercolour are starting to run out. The tube wrangler is rather an odd one. It's quite helpful to have and a good little tool that I picked up. It helps me use up all the paint in the tube, make sure that none of it goes to waste. And it's truly a money saver and it's rather cheap, under £5 there may be quite a long shipping time though, as most of them do come from Asian countries due to the low cost. Another very useful tool to use for watercolour artists would be brushes. So I'm going to go in depth with those as well. So here's selection, and these are the current brushes that I use. The Iskoda Perla, which is one of the cheaper ones in my collection. It's a synthetic brush with nylon. It's very good, it's a size 6 this one, and it's got a very nice feel to it. The next one is also synthetic, this is the ProArt Proline, not the Proline Plus, which they also do. This is a size 2, and I really like the size 2 for getting all the little details. Next up is the Silver Black Velvet. This has got a squirrel hair mix brush, it's got a very nice point, and it's not overly expensive for such a good brush. This one is the Skoda Versatile. It's also a size 6 synthetic sable brush. I do quite like it, even though I think I may have damaged my one. And lastly, which is the most expensive brush, would be the Skoda Kalinsky Sable Brush Skoda Reserver. It's very nice, it's got a very nice point to it when wet. I believe this is one of the cheaper sable brushes out there on the market. It has a gold ferrule and it's very nice finish to it. I really like it. Now I'm going to get into something a little bit different from watercolour and that's what's in this tin. These are Holbein acrylic wash. The Holbein acrylic wash set I have I got rather cheaply from the US. Acrylic gouache is very new to me, I've never tried it before, but I'm really enjoying using it. 
I do have an unboxing and first impressions review on my channel and I will link that above in the iCards if you'd like to check that out. So I'm going to go over now some of the watercolour brands which I found quite enjoyable this year. Usually I use a lot of old Holland in my watercolour palette, however there have been a couple that I have gotten this year that I've really enjoyed using or some that have just crept into my watercolour palette just because I've enjoyed using them. So first up is a completely new, completely new watercolour. That I've had this year and these are M Graham watercolours. These were very kindly sent to me by my friend Otto Cano and I will leave a, a link down to her channel down below in the description bar so a big thank you to Otto for sending them to me. Gift or not these watercolours are very nice. I really like them, they're quite economical, they're in 15ml tubes and they range from around £10 they're not overly expensive for the amount of paint that's in them. They are beautifully vibrant and rich. Again, I do have a full review of these colours, and I will also link that if you'd like to check that out. But they are definitely worth the price. An older brand which has been making its way into my palette, sneaking into it a lot more actually is the Rembrandt watercolour tubes. I did review these Dutch watercolours, however my thoughts and opinions have shifted a little bit since that initial review. I've grown more to like them and they are very nice colours even though the tubes are very small and they're a good place to start for a beginner looking for a good range of watercolours. And lastly, another new brand which I've gotten to try this year, but I've, and I've really enjoyed using it. A full review is coming very soon. And this would be the Jackson's Watercolours. The Jackson's Watercolours are probably the most economical on the list. And as I said, I will be reviewing these colours in depth, but I love them. And also, for every set like this purchased, Jackson's will also plant a tree in aid of helping the environment for an environmental charity. So I'm now going to talk about specific colours that I use quite a lot this year. Some newer ones and some that I want to experiment with. I'm not going to go and overlap with the Studio Palette tool. I'm going to leave that as it is. I'm not going to mention too many colours that are in there, but some other colours I've just been mixing in and experimenting with, and that I've been enjoying adding into my palette as little extras. Although I tried my best not to overlap with my studio palette tool or last year's video, which I'll link up in the iCards too, some of them did sneak their way in. So we have here Chauvenir Yellow Lemon, which is a PY3 colour. A nice, nice cool yellow which I do quite a lot of mixing with. Next is M. Graham's Nickel Azo Yellow. It's PY150. It's a very nice warm yellow and I really do like using it. I'm also using some of those brushes so you can see the widths and lines and some of the shapes you can get while using them. This colour here is Gamboge by Rembrandt. It's more of a quinacrone gold hue. It contains PY150 and P048. This is Perilene Red. A video about this colour in more depth will be up on my channel very soon, so make sure you subscribe not to miss that one. Next is a handmade watercolour. I did include handmade colours on last year's list, and didn't want to repeat them on this year but they also make very nice gifts so by all means go check them out and that was ultramarine blue handmade by myself next is prussian blue by rembrandt 
PB27. I really like this colour, however I'm going to shift it to a Delft Blue, which is also a very nice colour. This is Permanent Red Middle, again by Rembrandt. As I said, this brand is definitely growing on me, and I really like this colour. Next up is a colour that I didn't quite love to start with, and this is Garnet Genuine by Daniel Smith. It's a very nice colour, and after playing with it, I really started to enjoy it. All of the colours here and all the other tools will be linked down in the description bar. You can get them, most of them from Jackson's. The next colour is Perylene Green. This is a new colour to me as well from Daniel Smith. It's a very nice dark green colour. It reminds me a little bit of Green Earth, but a little bit darker, moodier, and much more intense. This one is Opera Pink. This particular one comes from Windsor & Newton. Surprisingly, it's a colour that I've used quite a lot of, and I think I may need another tube. This is very nice to play and paint with, even though it's not light fast. This colour is French Vermilion from Sennelier. It's a beautiful colour. It's kind of like a mid-red. I used it quite a lot recently to paint some poppies. That artwork can be found over on my website, which I will link down below. And then lastly, we have Golden Baroque Red, my favourite earth tone colour, which is gladly back on my palette again. So guys, that wraps up our tour for my favourite items I've been using this year and a gift guide for the holidays. All these items in this video can be used as budget gift ideas if you just buy like one tube of watercolour or a brush, but it can also be added all together to get a more luxury present such as a watercolour set if you so choose to do so. So I really hope you found it useful and gave you some really good ideas on what to get for your loved ones this year in the holiday season. So thank you so much for taking your time to watch this. Hopefully I shall see you in the next video. Take care, bye bye.